We are very happy to have with us today Patterson Fernandez, who is the Assistant Professor of Journalism in St. Xavier's College, Mopsa. Mr. Patterson, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. My pleasure. Now, our students, our viewers in, in uh, Goa, sometimes get confused which career is the best for them. So the purpose of this whole exercise of having various uh, experts coming on to the studio to tell about careers is to help them to understand what are the options that are available and uh, whether they can choose A, B, C option. So right away, Mr. Patterson, tell us, what is journalism? Well, uh, what is it not? Uh, journalism, I think, today has to be redefined and the way in its practice, um, things are getting more complex. But in its very simple sense, it's basically the process of gathering news and disseminating it to the public. How do you do it? Multiple ways. You have television, you have newspapers, you have magazines, you have the internet, uh, you have the radio. So the uh, media is multiple. All right? So the core is how to gather news, how to disseminate it. And what are the rules, principles, and basically the technicality is in understanding how to gather news and how to disseminate it. Again, there are various facets to it. There's um, uh, political journalism, there's crime. There are several beats, business, journal, uh, sports journalism, uh, entertainment lifestyle. So these are various facets of journalism. And of course, then there are allied fields to it also, which uh, are part of the course that we offer. That's a very clear, correct understanding of uh, journalism. Having said that, does a student have to be an expert in all the fields or uh, at the graduate level? Or does he have to specialize straight away in, say, sports or politics or health or whatever? For a journalist, it's always advisable that he or she knows various fields. Uh, the first, uh, what you say, pre prerequisite would be uh, understanding current affairs, uh, being well versed with what's happening around. And if you have a speciality in one, it's an added advantage. But it's always advisable that you are following everything. You're, you're just not reading the sports page like many boys would do, young boys. Uh -huh. they, are, they, are, they are literally Arabs. They are, they are newspaper stars from the last page. Uh, <laughs> so it shouldn't be something like that. Uh, they have to read everything. Uh, if they can specialize in one, is an added advantage, definitely. You know, uh, I've been to many schools and higher secondary schools. Uh, and I, I ask this question to most students. How many of you read the paper every day? And out of 60 or 50 students, believe me, only two or three students will put their finger up and say, I read the paper. It's very true. So yeah. would it be fair to say that those three students can qualify and the rest cannot? No, I mean it wouldn't. <laughs> because what if, I, what if I make the others read? Probably they may, they may suit the bill better. Uh, but having said that, even those three or two students who have raised their hands, probably they also must have not read everything. They probably just seen the page, uh, one or two pages of the newspaper. This is a growing trend, not just among uh, budding journalists, but across all fields. Uh, the, the reasons to this problem could be several. One could probably be poor reading habits, uh, the reading habits that are starting right from school, maybe that is changing. But uh, the problem I feel is not whether they are reading newspapers. The problem is whether they are reading. You read a newspaper, it could be even online, it could be through an app also, it could be even uh, reading something called as news in shorts. Yeah. Okay? So if they are not even doing that, then that's a problem. Okay. Not reading the newspaper is not a problem. The problem is that they are not reading news. Wonderful. Okay, tell us, uh, when did uh, journalism and mass communication start in St. Xavier's? Uh, the mass communication course started in 2004 and the journalism course started in 2006. So oh, the mass communication started first? Started first, yes. yes. All right. It was, uh, it's, it's completed more than... Uh, so there are two separate degrees. One yes. is mass communication and one is journalism. Yes. All right, okay. And tell me now, uh, in terms of uh, the quality of St. Davis College, how, how good is it in terms of uh, giving the student the best? Uh, well, I, I don't want to boast, but uh, the facts are that we are way ahead uh, in terms of providing uh, quality curriculum, in terms of syllabi. Uh, we are way ahead in terms of uh, offering infrastructure, 
compared to several uh, UG programs across the country. We are even matching the in terms of syllabi uh, and uh, practical exposure. We are we are matching most of the post graduation degrees. So um, we have a lot of our students who pass out and go on to do a masters outside Goa because there isn't an option in Goa. Uh, they go they go some most of them go abroad. Uh, the ones who are in India, most of them say. Uh, quite a bit is a repetition. We've already learned this at the at the degree level. The ones who are moving out, they feel that uh, you know they've they've kind of been the benchmark to the class. Of course, they, when the uh, the exposure seems to be more abroad um, because of several reasons: mm -hmm. again, faculty, right, yeah. the the kind of course, the way the course is designed, the exposure in terms of industry. But you, again, you, you use the word infrastructure. Yes. What is the infrastructure that you got that you are so proud about? Uh, we have uh, a state of the art studio. Um, with um, all kinds of uh, studio lighting for multicam shoots, so uh, panel discussions, interviews happen equivalent or even better than what we, what is what we are currently having right now. Uh, there are also there is a, a separate lab for the journalism students. There is a separate lab for the mass communication students. So technically, we cater to every student individually and see that at least one student has one one system, one computer system to work with. There are uh, enough uh, DSLR cameras. Uh, uh, there are enough of uh, video cameras, professional video cameras, whether it is the, the PD one seventy, whether it is the NX twenty, NX three. So, in terms of equipment, I don't think we are lagging behind. We are always in the process of upgrading whatever we have. So, even if we have the number of uh, cameras, or what kind of cameras? So, it, if we are, if we feel that there is a need for another one. Uh, depending on the need of of the students, uh, we put it up to the management, and the management is also happy to you know uh, upgrade the uh, equipment that we have. So that must be a lot of funding required for such things. Uh, how does the college manage such fund? Because uh, is this uh, one of the Goa University courses, or it's a self-funding program? The course is completely recognized by the university, Goa University. It's affiliated to the Goa University, but it is funded by the college. Okay. Which means the fees are uh, on the higher side compared to the regular students. Uh, although the college is a grant in it, the course is self-financed. It's financed by the college itself. So how much is the uh, fee to the student? Uh, this this is one thing which I've been I'm not in a position to comment because I'm neither from the management nor the person deciding the fee. So because if I if I say the, if I if I give out the fee right now and at the time of admission there is a change, you know. Maybe there could be a problem. The students may not be happy. Uh, so I'm not in a position to disclose that to you. Right? All right. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, but I can tell you, it is on the higher side from the regular. Fair enough. Okay. Now, uh, as you know very well, that uh, students only from the 12th standard can apply for this program. Now, would it be okay for uh, a science, a commerce, or arts, or now even vocational student can apply? In fact, uh, some of our students who stand out are the ones who are science dropouts. They, they probably not uh, found space for them for themselves there. Probably they were not cut out for it, or, or they were just not interested in that. In that, and they were cut out for something like journalism right. and and it's a light fields. And ultimately, they have been doing it. In fact, we've uh, had quite a few students that were um, dropped out from science, uh, taken up journalism, and are really doing well for themselves. And uh, when you say cut out, is there a cut out for admissions? Uh, say forty five percent or fifty percent? We don't really look at the percentage. What we're looking at is the inclination towards media and journalism. Okay. What is your inclination towards these subjects? How much do you follow? What is the current affairs you follow? Uh, there have been students who have got very less percentage, but the moment they have got enrolled to the course, they have been doing very well. Okay. And at the same time, we have had students who have got very good marks at at the 12th standard, uh, maybe some 70, 75 percent. But the moment they are enrolled, uh, some of them struggle. So it all depends on your inclination towards uh, journalism and What are the kind of uh, uh, projects do students get in order to get familiar with uh, getting into journalism strongly? So uh, let's look at it phase-wise. Mm. Uh, what it starts with is um, in the first year, uh, we have uh, introductory subjects. So the assignments are um, based on the practicals, uh, practical subjects that they have. For example, introduction to journalism. So in this uh, practical paper, which has a, comp a practical component, what the students will be made to do is they'll uh, first in, in the theory they explain what is news, what makes news, mm -hmm. what are news values, and uh, from that 
during the practical class, the student has explained what do you now need to report, what kind of stories should be reported, and students are sent on field. Maybe they are sent to their localities, find out some problems, some social issues within themselves, and write a story about it. Now, when they come with the information, the, stu the students are taught how to write the lead. That is the first part of the of a report. Yeah, okay. So, what makes the lead? Something called as the five Ws and one inch. Okay. okay. And some now we have the six W that's called why not also. Okay. So, what, where, when, oh. why, and how. And now there's something also called as why not. <laughs> okay. So these are these are things that have been taught. So how how to come up with that report? What makes a report? Okay. Besides the lead, what else comes in the report? Writing in the inverted pyramid style. So these are few technicalities. It's in the first year. What happens in the second year? Then in the second year, so these this moves uh, now. You move on to the next phase, feature writing. Okay. To write features. Uh, then there is uh, one paper on art appreciation, uh, through which you will uh, learn how to review uh, dramas, programs, mm -hmm. uh, films. How to review? How to write a film review? How to write a book review? Uh, so this, um, you know, so you go to the next level. And finally, the the TY is a time uh, when the students do maximum of the assignments because in the first two years. Uh, they are basically doing one paper of journalism, one paper of mass communication, and one paper of uh, advertising and PR. So that's very little time for the student to get maximum practical exposure. But what happens in the sixth semester, fifth and sixth semester, the student uh, studies all five, uh, uh, six uh, papers of journalism, mm -hmm. from which three are uh, theory based and three are practical based. Now, in these, the practicals are one is, for example, blogging. Uh, which includes development of the web, developing content, how to design a website. Okay. Now, again, this is not from the computer science perspective. This is from the journalism perspective. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how to uh, write content for the web? Um, how to plan your content? Um, how to try? How you can generate revenue through your own blog? Okay. So these are a few things that are taught. Uh, then there is also something called as a TV news bulletin. So the students uh, are, meant, are told to do an entire news capsule, which would include at least five to six uh, different news stories from politics, sports, uh, weather report. All right. So these are put together, and a bulletin is, is created. So in that news bulletin, the students are also learning um, how to shoot, what to shoot. They are also learning what to edit, how to edit. Um, and also there is also a program on uh, a paper on designing. So it's a production paper. So the students are taught how to design uh, a newspaper page, okay, and also a magazine. And in fact, their uh, major project that is for 100 marks in the TY is a 100 uh, 100 mark uh, project, which is roughly between uh, f uh, 40 to 52 pages. 52 it's, pages. Yes, it's a complete news website, a news uh, magazine oh. that the students produce. Completely planned, designed, uh, structured, written by the students. All right, okay. There is a, uh, definitely a guide who... Now, are they attached to any magazine or a newspaper uh, during the three-year period that they are students with you? Uh, what happens is a lot of uh, the, the industry uh, person, personnel, they get in touch with us and they want contributors. So students are free to write, uh, whether for magazines, newspapers, or uh, even work for television uh, channels, uh, but not on a full-time basis because the, the course is a full-time. Uh, what we also suggest is an internship. Uh, an internship is mandatory for a student, one month internship, where the student interns with, uh, either, with a, either a news channel or a newspaper and gets on the job training. Now this is usually during the holidays. But throughout the course, the student is free to contribute to newspapers. And we at, as the faculty become the mediators between the industry and the students. Now, in the three year program, Every year there is a one month. Uh, no, it's it's once. It's if, only once. Yes, okay, right. but if the student intends to do more, is uh, uh, he or she is definitely. That means you do not help the student to get an internship. We we help uh, as in uh, we we provide we be basically become the mediators. So we try to hunt for places where there are vacancies. See what happens is sometimes the student wants to do an internship at a particular place. Uh, like for example, we had a student who did an internship at uh, NDTV. Mm. So the student uh, approached the uh, the channel by themselves, yeah. by uh, by himself, and uh, you know got got it done. What we did is we provided the one five uh, letter saying that this is an authentic student. Very good. One. Final question. Yeah. Why do students tend to go abroad to study journalism? 
They tend to go in all fields. My only journalism. No, but uh, uh, that's why I'm, uh, I'm the, really keen to know. Okay, multiple multiple reasons. Again, uh, one thing is uh, in Goa across all fields, the growth is slow. Uh, a student starts very slow. I'm not saying the student may be great. There is always a, a gap between any education system and the industry. So the student is never able to match the industry needs because the industry is changing every uh, you know every time very frequently. So of course that that gap is also there. Now because of that gap also the, the student is also probably not paid enough or not as per the satisfaction of the student. And the student sees a, a slower growth. So we have had students who have worked in Goa for uh, three years, four years and they've seen themselves at the same spot or, or not very uh, far ahead from where they, where yeah. they started. Whereas the same student who moves to even Mumbai for that matter tends to see a lot of growth. Okay. He sees that he grows within no time. So, a student, so that's yeah. okay. basically it's growth and uh, career prospects. Okay. Mr. Fernandez, thank you so much for being with us and uh, I'm sure students who are watching this program will be able to uh, now better decide which is the better option. Yes, thank, you so thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we are here with Suchi Fateh from St. Xavier's College, third year journalism. And uh, Suchi, please tell us how were these three years, first of all, overall? Uh, I would say fun exciting, a lot of challenges, yeah. Okay, that's a lot. Three, three words that would summarize the three words. What did you do in your 12th standard? I was a science student. You were a science student, and then you chose the stream of journalism. Was journalism your goal from the very beginning? No. Uh, to be honest, I didn't know why I took journalism that at that time. Just that I didn't get into uh, engineering, so I was, I. A friend told me about this course because he was doing it. And I was like, why not? Because it was something fascinating, something new. So I was like, just, let's just try. Because I didn't know what I wanted that time. So yeah, I just jumped into the thing. So now three years down the lane, does it feel better that you didn't take, you didn't get engineering? Has it worked out for the better for you? I think yes, it has. Uh, it's something that I love doing. It's interesting, you know. Uh, this course, uh, I've got to, like th these three years, I've got to know that it's just amazing. Like, I've learned a lot about myself. Uh, I The thing is, it's a course where you meet people, you get to talk to new people and stuff. So yeah, I like it. All right. So from science, while you were moving, into your course, that's your first year. Did you have an entrance test or an entrance exam? What was the formalities you had to take care of to get into the course? The documents and all the formalities are all the same like for the other courses as well. Just that we had like a general knowledge test and uh, interview later on with the faculty members. Okay, so a one-on-one -on -one interview? Yeah. All right. And is it very difficult, the interview? What do they ask? No, What's no, no. It? They're very friendly. Uh, they just want to know what you're interested in, your habits, like your hobbies and stuff, yeah. All right, so it's like a basic interview to yeah, get yeah. in. Uh, I believe journalism as a specialization comes in only in the final year. So yeah. for the first two years you're uh, studying uh, different subjects and then finally you get, you choose journalism for your final year. What are the various subjects that you study in the first and the second year? So in the first and the second year, so I would start with the first year. First years, we have papers that are related to journalism and then papers which are related to mass communication and then uh, two papers which is which are advertising and PR. So then we have basic introductory subjects like the history and everything. Then in the second year, what happens is we have allied subjects to journalism, which are only for the journalism students. and allied subjects for the mass communication. So we have art appreciation and all of that. They have their separate uh, consumer and all of that. Correct. Yeah. So then in TY, then it's like specializations for journalism. We have like six proper journalism subjects. We have their mass communication. All right. So it's, it's, it's like a roadmap towards getting journalism yeah. as a full-fledged subject. After you finish your finals, which is sometime very soon, uh, what's the plan next? So I'm thinking of taking a break. That doesn't mean I will, you know, just stay at home. I'm planning to apply to a certain uh, PR firms because that's what I want to get into. So I'm thinking of Ogilvy and Matter and all of these. 
So and after that, I'm planning to go to UK for my further studies. Oh, goody! So yeah. it's a year of on-hand experience yeah. for you, and then go ahead and study more. Yes. Uh, if a student wants to study right after doing mm -hmm. their bachelor's uh, in journalism, can they study in Goa? Uh, Goa doesn't offer you a master's course. Yeah, so you, either you have to go uh, abroad or yeah, I would say Mumbai, Pune, a lot of All right. colleges. So there are a lot of colleges yeah. in, around India where someone can yeah. study their master's in journalism. And what about jobs? If someone wants to immediately, like you want to take a break and then you know, uh, explore places. But if someone is looking as, at mass communication three years and going directly into a job mm -hmm. after the three years, uh, is it a possibility? Are you employable after your bachelor's? Yes, why not? Because uh, Xavier's is a place where you get to learn a lot, uh, especially our department. They if they go out of their way to help us and to give us their you know inputs and stuff. So for a student from our course, I think it's very easy to get a job as a fresher uh, in Goa, outside Goa. You can apply for internships. It's if not. Or like you know proper employment you can apply for internships where you get stipend and if you're thinking about money if not if you just want ex uh, exposure exposure you can just go internships employment so there's a lot of options a lot of options for sure uh, the other thing that uh, is very fascinating about journalism is the fact that you can be a part of media uh, how soon does that happen if you get out of your bachelor's will you be able to get a media job and what kind of a media job um, media job. So if we are looking in, into like, you know, a print media or, a, or the broadcast or journalism yeah. field. So when you get out, print media, you'll obviously, it depends on what you want to do. If you if you want to write, if you want to go on the field. So according to that, you will, you will choose. Yes. yes. Now, in, in broadcast, I would say uh, it's normally they put you into like internship like lower with someone else so that you get a proper because obviously the yes they have more experience yeah. and you are still they want learning. you to do something good for their company, company. so yeah that's how it works does saint xavier uh, encourage students for an internship on course yes so the thing is we have to do one month uh, internship compulsory three years course one month internship all right. Where did you do your internship? I have done around five internships. Wow. Yeah. You're are you supposed to do that, or you just no? Really no I, I just like doing it. You oh. get a lot of experience. And can you tell us the one that you had the project? Well, I believe after doing an internship, you got to make a project uh, on it. Which was that internship? So uh, no, you don't have to make a uh, project after the internship. It's just like an internship that then you need the certificate to show. All that. right. So the internship that I liked the most was for EFI. I was working with the PR company uh, called Perfect Relations. So I was with the De uh, Delhi branch. So I was working under them. I got to learn a lot from them, how the PR firm works, how do you, you know, you have to be on your toes always. So yeah. Yeah, so on field is much better. You can see the smile on your face. I'm happy doing. Uh, if there's a student out there, uh, if you can look into the camera and, you know, tell the students who are watching, what is journalism all about? And if they're in the 10th standard, they've got two more years of doing, you know, of science or uh, commerce or arts. Uh, what do you need to have to pursue journalism? Uh, and if they already know that they want to pursue journalism, what should they be reading or doing to get better at this course? So uh, first, I would like to say that if you want to get into journalism, uh, then read <laughs> anything and everything that comes in your way. Read, watch news, listen to radio, news again, uh, read newspapers. That's something you need to know. And yeah, you should have good general knowledge and you should know about current affairs. These two things you have and you will slay it. <laughs> slay it. I like that. You're going to slay it. Uh, for someone who's just. Uh, getting out of their 12th standard and needs to make a very uh, clear decision so as to what stream to take, uh, what would you suggest to them? One thing, uh, if your parents want to do engineering and doctoring, please don't don't listen to them. Follow your dreams, uh, be what you want to, like do what you want to do, like whichever course, whichever colleges, make sure it's going to be for the betterment of you, for the growth and nothing else, yeah.